Hello and welcome to this conversation between myself, Edwin Rostron, and animators Lizzie Hobbs and Stuart Hilton. Uh, I've put together these two edge of frame screening programmes for this year's London International Animation Festival, which celebrate the work and influence of Robert Breer. The second of these two screenings, which is entitled After Images, presents a range of work by contemporary animation artists whose work connects to Breer's in different ways, taking his lead into unexpected new directions and features Stuart Hilton's 1998 film Six Weeks in June and Lizzie Hobbs's 2018 film I'm OK. Thank you for joining me, Stuart and Lizzie. Uh, so I guess to start off with, I just wondered if you could give us a little bit of general background to your films, but also I'm wondering where Breer's work might fit into those films for you as well. So maybe if we start off with you, Lizzie. Aha. Uh, so I'm OK um, is a film about the artist Oscar Kokoschka, um, which I made in 2018. Um, and it's paint on on paper. Um, and it, yeah, it's a six minute short, which I suppose is a little bit kind of expressionistic and with a slightly experimental uh, streak, um, although it is kind of based on real, real events. Um, how it relates to Bria. Uh, I think we, we chose this one out of all of the films, didn't we, Edwin? I think because it has some, I suppose, some elements of kind of flicker or, or using the 25 frames in a sort of um, in more intense way, <laughs> expect like Bria. Um, uh, I guess I don't know quite if I can sort of identify what else is sort of very Breerish about it, um, apart from that, because it's not sort of, um, it doesn't, I don't suppose it l looks very like Robert Breer's work, but I think- I think like, the, um, the pace of it, the energy of it has real kind of uh, shared spirit. And yeah, even though it doesn't look the same, something about the structure, it's interesting how you've kind of taken a structural idea that's a bit comparable to his but it's put in the realm of narrative and a sort of biographical story but I think you can experience your film on a purely formal way which is what I think relates to Brew is it's got this narrative but also as a just a sort of formal experimental film it works purely if you didn't know who any of the people were what it was about I think it would work okay. maybe That's in good. that maybe in that respect it kind of touches on Breer in his approach maybe a bit. Yeah, and maybe the fact that I also I also animate on kind of um, a, a five index kind of cards and they kind of have a, you know, I, I sort of do it intuitively as well. So I kind of make sure that the movements sort of make sense on in this kind of flippy sort of flip book uh, format as well. So I don't really think of it in terms of kind of uh, a narrative work when I'm making them. But I do like to sort of slot it into a kind of narrative structure somehow. So yeah, it's quite nice to hear hear what you thought about that though, Edwin. That was good. <laughs> and Stuart, what about your uh, film? Um, so Six Weeks in June is a kind of a diary film, I suppose, in, in a travelogues, maybe. Um, uh, it was basically, I was in a band and we toured America, did 11,000 miles in the back of a van. And to keep me sane in between venues, um, I was in the band, by the way. Um, but to stay sane, I kind of just drew all the time, drew out the window, just the landscape, but also things that were happening in the van, in the rooms, uh, in, in between places, in between the music, in a funny way. Um, and we also had a, uh, a video camera that was lent to us for the whole of the tour. Um, and I took a lot of sound. Uh, well, I realized that the sound was really important on that, uh, this sort of handicam feel um, that I started to tune into, I think, uh, in terms of the, the audio. So I started, I started, when I got back, I just started to animate from, from I kept the stack in sequence. I started from number one and linked it to number two and then linked that one to number three and just went, you know, the straight ahead uh, 
you know the uh, straight ahead animation i suppose is the way i was doing it but it was also completely improvised and just i decided what i was going to do at the time uh just uh and when i got bored i would stop and sometimes i would let uh an image link to another one and sometimes i may work backwards at times to make them sort of cross over and merge uh, but other times i would just decide to cut and um so it was quite um was a bit like a super eight concept in some ways I, th I thought about it a little bit like super eight and just sort of going and just stopping spontaneous thing okay what's next but uh but i had a i had a structure so um and uh i mean i could there's many more things to say about it in lots of ways but i think it's quite a good idea to when, when i i don't I suppose I don't think about it necessarily linking to Bria directly, but the way I do work, that, that sort of discontinuity thing that he's, you know, well, you can just see it in the surfaces of, of his work. Um, when I first saw that, I think it might have been, I think, num I think 69 was the first one I saw maybe. And just, I was just so excited by not only the, the kind of the, the fact that it was seemed to be space, not things that was that were moving. And I think that idea of space was quite important to me. And how do you get to that space on screen without putting sort of objectness on the surface? And I, I really liked how his work sort of got rid of objects in a way, <laughs> and it became frames and, and movement and change. And I was I think that's the core. And also the other thing, there's one more thing about the Bria connection. I love, the thing that was so excited by is how he used sound. <clears throat> because I think I was probably coming from that sense of, I liked abstract animation maybe, and I thought it had to be structured using music. And that was a sign that you didn't have to think like that at all. And I loved, you know, even just looking back at that or thinking back to it, there's the sound that just stops. And then it doesn't come back for a really long time, well, several minutes, and then it returns. And it's just so exciting. I just find that the connection between, um, yeah, that sort of imagery and sound and the kind of space between the synchrony and, and just letting it pull apart. So I suppose those two things, those synchronous moments that just, you know, your brain just makes it connect anyway. Um, so, yeah. That sort of stuff. That's where Bria was really important for me. Yeah, um, I think the, the element of sound in his work is something I'd love to read more about or somebody needs to delve into that more because they're yeah. so mysterious and strange, some of his soundtracks, yeah. and they totally <laughs> make the film. Like, yeah, as you say, you could see films that look a bit like that with music soundtracks or with more generic yeah. soundtracks and... Mm. Um, they'd be completely different. I think his approach to sound is absolutely fascinating. Um, yeah. So you said... Just on that, sorry, I was just going to say, just because we just mentioned that, that point about sound, remember seeing the New Order video that he did, you know, he contributed or whatever, it, how, however that worked. But I remember being, you know, obviously knowing his work at that time and thinking it was really exciting and then seeing it there and I didn't get it. I just, I suddenly... Uh, what someone doing that i didn't get it at all yeah. because of the sound it was like it's not yeah. that <laughs> i mean i think it's oh, a yeah. really it's a really fun uh thing yeah. he did it and i love to watch it but you're right it becomes yeah. more decorative it's em he's employed for his style presumably and not to yeah. make a rear film as such but um yeah yeah it's mm. a curiosity for sure um yeah no it's funny so you were saying 69 was the first that you saw can you remember when you saw it and um what the context was of seeing it do you know what i was trying to nail this down in my crappy old memory sack and um i think there was some program on telly um that was uh, that had him on it and because i sort of remember this fragment of a of an interview as well where he was talking about um he just wants films to sort of, uh, what was it? he said something like, I use style as content or something. Like that. And I, I've not been able to find it again, but 
the interviewer was asking him something about his style and it, or, or about the content of, of his work. And he was going, why don't I use style as content? And it sort of always stuck with me as an interesting kind of provocative comment. Um, but I think it was a, a TV program back in the 80s at some point when animation was kind of, there were TV programs about them on Channel 4 and, you know, like um, Claire Kitts and obviously in amongst all that. And I'm not sure who was in control of that particular program and what it was quite I have a sort of it's quite a vague memory, um, and I saw, but I did see a, at the time a few bits of abstract, unusual animation um, that got under my skin or something, planted planted the seed, maybe. And so, were you familiar with his work by the time you made Six Weeks in June? Was it sort of in your head as something you were like responding to? Yeah, I, I would say. Because I, I wrote a little bit about Bria, and I remember doing a dissertation at the RCA when I was there, and sort of that's when I, I really got him. At that point, I think I, might, I must have seen him in Liverpool, but I, when I was there, at, at um, you know, sort of in, in the late eighties. But um, I think the biggest influence maybe was then. Um, but I didn't. I would say I hadn't watched that many um because you just didn't come across them unless you were sort of going to festivals or there was a particular screening it wasn't like you could just come across that stuff so i would i would catch bits of it and then it would just in a sense it's almost like you glimpse it and then you Im imagine the rest or you invent the rest it's almost like like you, an overheard comment and you make a story up around it yeah. and i feel like my experience of bria was passing by and being so excited by it and not really being able to get hold of ever, any of it ever again. And yeah. I don't think I really chased it or anything like that, but it sort of, I felt like it had done enough or something. For yeah, me to sort I mean, of go, okay. <laughs> without wanting to sound like two old men, one of the beauties of the pre-internet <laughs> age was that <laughs> the idea of what something was like was so inspiring. Like I had a book about William Kentridge for years before I saw it. I was so inspired by William Kentridge, which died down after I saw his work, to be honest. I mean, it works fine, but the idea of it took it that, I, you know, worked off that inspiration for years. And um, yeah, sometimes yeah. seeing the work, sometimes only a little bit will do really, I think. Yeah, that's anyway. true. I mean, I think <laughs> reading, about, um, reading about those sort of structural materialist filmmakers as well, I always remember reading things about like, you know, Malcolm McGrice and people um, being very excited and then, and then watching the films and, and not loving all of them <laughs> mm. in the way that I thought I would, but I was just really stimulated by it, just reading about it. I suppose. And a way of writing as well, isn't there? That's sort of very descriptive where people just talk, they just talk about the work and that really kind of evokes it rather well. And you can't think don't need, yeah. Yeah. And also, I think a, a still of an animation, if you just start to imagine what that would be in the animation, I mean, it's so vague in your head, it can be incredibly inspiring. Um, yeah. Lizzie, can you remember when you first came across his work and, and when that was? Yeah, I think I was in, and again, I, a bit like uh, Stuart, I can't remember quite where it was, but I was in Canada for my to make my film with the NFB, and we went off somewhere, and it might have been a festival like Ottawa, and then we went somewhere else, and Bria was there talking, and I'd never heard of him, so I was just amazed, yeah, to hear him talking, and he was, you know, this was 2004, so he was, he was quite elderly but he was still extremely lucid a little bit deaf by the end wasn't he so sometimes he would just yeah. he wouldn't answer a question but he was really interesting anyway yeah I saw him there and the work as well and then when he came to Aurora in Norwich do you remember that in 2007 he and Jeff Sher they both were showing at Adam Pugh's mm -hmm. festival in Norwich and that was amazing to see both those um you know artists together was just fantastic mm. and then um there was one other time that he was here uh bria yeah anyway oh yeah it was the baltic exhibition oh yeah brilliant and that was where they had all the frames of recreation framed up and yeah that just blew my mind to see the the actual film the artifact and to realize exactly what it was he'd done and how clever it was to to just do it you know 
And and was there a particular film of his that had a an effect on the way that you approach animation or you think about it? Do you think, or was it more of his general general work? Yeah, uh, I think it's the idea. You know, his ideas, and then I think you could see any of the films, and they, you know, he's like a kind of beacon isn't he he's got all his all his ideas are in in what in one film you could see you know five different possibilities and but yet the questions that he asks are really quite simple and and focused so it's they're just like you know they're just amazing films to study all of them aren't they I think but recreation is my kind of go-to I kind of watch that you know every month <laughs> i love mount fuji that's a really fantastic and then the swiss army knife and the rats but i think some of them you can't see anymore and i've got the vhs uh the rear vhs i'm just waiting to get the double dvd that like oh yes I've got, i'd hardly <laughs> recommend the uh the double dvd it's it's it amazing um yeah, yeah i mean i've been reading a bit about you know i've been reading some interviews with him and stuff while i've been putting these programs together and he just he comes across as such a nice straightforward guy which is you know not often the case with great artists to be honest and um what's really reassuring but also slightly depressing is you know, he's talking about how dispirited he is with festivals, how he can't be bothered with galleries and this, that and the other. But one thing that I really liked was he made Recreation, then he made Recreation too, but he said it was so rubbish he wouldn't show anyone to it. And, that, anyone, and I was just like, you know, as someone who's tried to recreate something that somebody might have said that was good and it never works, it was music to my ears, even Breer, you know. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Edwin? What, what, which of your films do you think is influenced most by Breer? Because you, you, you're connected to him very strongly. Well, it's, it's funny, actually, because I think the film... Some, so, so somebody said that a film of mine seemed to remind them of Breer, and I hadn't really seen any of his work. Um, I was sort of aware of him, but I, I try and start watching stuff on the internet and I just didn't really, I wanted to save it for a proper situation. You know, I thought I'd just wait to see it properly, which ended up being the Baltic exhibition. Yeah. And I, actually as, as weird luck, had, not luck, sorry, bad luck had it. The day I went to see it and saw all his work for the first time was the day that he passed away, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that was a really weird coincidence, but um, yeah. Mm. It was amazing to see it all properly installed with the float sculptures around and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah. yeah, and and really soak it up um, in an exhibition. Um, but I, I think, yeah, maybe I was more influenced by him before I saw his work than I was afterwards, because I think if it's conscious in my head, it's, you d I don't know, you, you don't consciously emulate stuff, I suppose, but I... I feel like it's just his kind of spirit, you know, the, the idea of whimsy or whim and spontaneity and just doing something for the, not for the sake of it, but just getting into just animating a sequence and then doing something else and, you know. I think that's, uh, that for me, that's probably the thing that is uh, so thrilling and exciting. And when we think about the idea of animation possibly being laborious and all that stuff, that was one of the things that really struck me about how he seemed to work and just the joy in his uh, films. And also the fact that they seem to have just been finished like that a few seconds ago. Yeah. There's something about the freshness of them. And even now they are beyond time. They're, they're, there's no time that they're from <laughs> in a strange way. Yeah. You know, there are hints of, you know, cause it's film and it's, it's kind of, you know, uh, four, three format and all the rest of it, there are clues. But aside from that, um, they're just so fresh. And the, I, I think, that, you know, as, as, as um, Lizzie was saying about the, his ideas, uh, uh, there are, they feel, it feels like it's just, they're just made of, of pure ideas, and, but also not super conscious. They, they seem to emerge yeah. out of the process of something. I don't know what it is because you're not coming away going, ah, oh, yes, I know about Fuji now. Or you're not coming away about anything with he that. Had a very sort of clear, he had a very sort of clear idea about what he wasn't going to engage with as well as a mm. kind of painter's background. And then he was also thinking about movement in a very sort of focused way. So I think he wasn't mm. kind of burdened with, you know, the pressures of, you know, he didn't 
you know, no mm. expectations. He was just an artist sort of asking questions about materials and about time and about... Yeah. How when you were drawing the 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 cards in on on the tour did you think you were going to turn it into an animation at that point was that what you had in mind it's interesting i can't quite remember what my state of mind was with it <laughs> I, I i think I, I think i must have thought that because i got sort of a4 paper and cut it into a6 i could just went sliced it old school with um we used to do that in Liverpool, you know, Ray Fields got us to do that and just work, working small seemed to, it was getting closer to the scale of film actually, weirdly enough, you know. Um, so yeah, I must've prepared it with that in mind. It was just like wrapped, you know, elastic band wrapped around it and I actually did punch. So yeah, so I must've done, I must've thought that. So I'd punched, um, did I? No, no, actually I punched them when I got back. That's what it was. I thought, right, I've got to do it now because I've put a little like a, a punch hole into the paper, so I've got to make it now. That's what it was. <laughs> what I wondered um, about Bria was, I wondered whether Bria was editing in camera with his cards or mm. whether he was editing on a steam bet because he had lots of live action footage incorporated. So well, I wonder whether he just like made a gap and then reshot it or whether he was, you know. It sounds like he was definitely cutting stuff off after it was processed on some films from what I've read, but I think maybe it changed. You know, he was making films for so long, I'm sure it changed. And some of his films are very different to others, so he may have employed different processes. I mean, something that your film, Stuart, makes me think of, which I'm not sure you would have necessarily have seen it uh, at that time, is his film called Breathing, which is just black kind of line marks on a on white and on high contrast black and white film. It's it's in this Brea screening that I've put together and it it just has that sort of like stark monochrome look. Um, and he had like a really, really clear sort of conceptual idea for what he wanted from that. It's, it's interesting when people have total experimentation, improvisation, but are very clear of the parameters of it. And I think mm. with a lot of films that he made, he did that one particularly, it's very narrow parameters, but it's one of his best, best mm. films, I think. Do you know what? I haven't seen it. I don't know breathing, but I, I, I remember seeing it written down. And I, but I, um, I'm really excited about seeing your showing actually of all this stuff because um, that's one a that lot of it I don't know. That's you know. that's one where the soundtrack is a real treat as well because it's possibly a dog breathing, but possibly something entirely different. It's very okay. very interesting, mysterious soundtrack. Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> um, so Lizzie, I was just get, getting back to something we were talking about at the very beginning, the way that I'm Okay is, you know, it's, it's a film about historical figures, characters, and it has a narrative structure, um, as do a number of your other films, and yet you're always kind of really engaged in formal experimentation and playing with materials as well, and I just wondered if one was prioritised over the other, one in, one informed the other, or if it was just a natural mixture of what you were into? I think it's a, na yeah, it's a natural mixture of what I'm into because I quite like uh, somehow, to, uh, I like the sort of structure of a, a sort of story or a narrative. But within that, I, I like the chance to kind of <clears throat> play with the edges of how I might be able to convey that, how much, how little I might be able to do to convey what I need to tell the story. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Maybe I'm just not quite brave enough just to take a sort of material or formal question and and go down that route. Because I, um, yeah, like Stuart, I also really love the you know the co-op filmmakers and the structural materialist filmmakers as well. Mm. Um, I'm even married to one, so I do know the. Film, <laughs> but I think That's what I like love them. <laughs> I love them. I love it that much. Uh, yeah, but. But I think I, yeah, I, somehow I just, I like the sort of storytelling. I've always really liked sort of having a, uh, yeah, a, and I like humour. Not, not to say you can't, because Bria's films are extremely funny, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, that's, the, that's certainly the other thing that marks him from so much experimental film, maybe not so much experimental animation, but the humour 
in abstraction, it's a beautiful combination. The humour of a shape moving and yeah, yeah, like in yeah, Vacation, yeah. there's that little mouse that goes across, you know, and the way that Noel Birch's film finishes on the cut, you know, there's just all these little kind of. It's about beats and timing and about things being together, and you know, the rat and the the knife and you know all the things that you kind of put together. It's such a, it's so elegant in every way. His kind of approach to, mm. yeah. Yeah, so humour is really important to me as well. And mm. uh, I think, yes, I really like playing with kind of voice and image and how you can, how little you could do with one in order to sort of convey what you want. Yeah. I, I think there's, some, there's something in his films where you have, a suspect, uh, maybe his later films more, where you have a sense of his life in, the, in, the, in between the film, like there's photos from his life. Yeah. You don't get the feeling that they're chosen because he's, attached to the photo it's just some material to use and he's just incorporating his daily life and I think there's this relationship to materials that I think you both have as well where it's like something very intimate and every day like you're you know the typewriter or even the way you use paint Lizzie and and with yours Ooh. Stuart like you know the way you've got daytime tv and save me and then these little bits of I don't know maybe I feel like there's receipts and things in your films and I just feel like that's one of the great things about animation and animators is it's part, it has to be part of your life. If you're a solo individual independent animator, it's you're, you're probably doing it at home or in your studio and it's not yeah. like this separate work of art as such. It's just this thing that you're living through. Mm. I think that's, that's a really interesting point. I think that's something I would say about, you know, say with, with your stuff, Lizzie, the, the sort of, um, the, the kind of immediacy of the, you know, the marks and the mark making and the sort of surface is that's something I would say is I'm always really aware of when I watch your stuff. It's that, that kind of activity uh, and the feeling that, yeah, like, like Bria, like I've seen about Bria, actually the feeling that it's really fresh. You could still, it may still be wet in some way, <laughs> some way or other. Um, and, and it seems to be just, um, uh, you know, being born right in front of you, which I really, you know, I think that's, uh, I always find that really exciting. And I would definitely make, you know, make that connection uh, with your stuff, with Bria. No. Last year um, for, for LIAF, we talked about our um, favourite one minute of animation and I chose recreation. And uh, so Nag sent a lovely copy of it from Lightcone and, so I was able to look at every frame and uh, yeah, in, you know, some, fr there's things you would never know are there, like bits of mm. sellotape and string and, you know, photographs and just, it's just amazing when you break it down, isn't it? The, the piece, mm. it's like a whole bit of life in there. <laughs> and you think, oh gosh. And then when you see it, you think, oh, that's what that is moving from here to there. And that's, yeah. you know, in, a, in many ways, you wouldn't be able to tell how it would move by just looking at the, the 35 millimeter film strips. It's something that he sort of, yeah, just plays with, I guess. Mm. Who knows? He's a good animator, isn't he, as well? Well, that's exactly what I was gonna bring up is that his, his animation, his actual ability with animation, like his works are so to do with animation and his ability with animation is amazing even though some of it seems so loose and kind of thrown about, but it's very well executed. And I think that also is something that strikes me about both of your works is they couldn't be anything other than animated. Animation is like at the core of them to do with the timing and the movement. And I just, I, I just wondered if maybe you could talk a little bit about what it is about actually animating that, that excites you or, or is enough to excite you to go through the pain of it, you know? <laughs> do you want to feel that one Lizzie first or? <laughs> yeah I can't imagine doing anything else I guess and also it's a bit like the more you do the more you you like it don't you and like yeah I sort of feel like um I think Bria said that you know he approached each new work with this kind of feeling of heightened sensibility which is almost a bit like it's almost a bit like being a bit manic you know or something and then, you know, I, yeah, I do sort of seven or eight hours a day. And then at the end of the day, I'm like totally wrung out. It's like a sort of, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's 
bit bonkers, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Drawing like... A bit bonkers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So I do, it's a ridiculous yeah. pastime. It's an amazing pastime, isn't it? And I just sort of feel like I wouldn't want to do anything else, you know, because there's still so much to learn about about what, mm. what's possible. And also, as you get kind of older, then you can sort of take more risks and kind of push, you know, because people just think, oh, well, she's, you know, she's done some things, okay. I mean, if it's okay, you can go batty at the end, can't you? <laughs> like just do all, the, <laughs> do all those sort of crazy stuff that they might get, you know, in a hundred years time or something. So, yeah, for me, it's just like a, a endlessly kind of exciting sort of, um, yeah playground yeah it's amazing yeah. It's, it's interesting i think um one of the things as i've reflected on over the years but when i've been animating things and and people would say you know, like doing animation you're doing the same thing over and over and all that sort of stuff and it's it's always it's actually the differences that you notice that's the thing it's, it's not about the similarities it's about the differences so when you're drawing all that that the tiny differences and I, and I used to just really enjoy the sort of the control I suppose and the pattern that the, the time you know on paper manifests itself as you know these sort of patterns through paper if it's you know and I you know I always like paper I like to use paper myself I've you know I've been using more digital forms and actually that's quite interesting as well but it's a different kind of process it's a bit it's oddly quicker you know <laughs> you don't have to, to pick up paper and move it and so on you can, <laughs> you can be kind of performative and there's like a rhythmic element to it that you can mm. speed the process up in some ways but what you gain from that you might lose from something to do with the the pressure of a pen or the the sort of the the i suppose friction maybe and things like that you know sort of surfaces and friction and dragging pens and sort of leaving marks and all that sort of stuff which um again you know i, I think something i always enjoyed with breer is that you know he'll use that spray gun stuff where he'll use these kind of really spontaneous looking uh, stencils all those stencil that stenciling thing the idea of seeing a line and then a block and then it's negative and then nothing and then a dot and then it and that idea that the movement and the space can be generated with just these scant sort of you know impressions that all seem different but there's something about the edges that are common that, that make the, the sense of movement i've always been really excited by that mm. and uh and he's just you know, revisiting stuff like for this talk i just thought I better remember, I better go and watch some Bria again because I've not seen it for ages. And there's fragments here and there and you know on the on YouTube and whatnot. Uh never the ones you want to see, because mostly the ones I know, but you know, I'm excited to see these ones I don't know. But uh, but yeah, but revisiting it all and again and going, Oh my god, he's just mm -hmm. forgotten how much of an influence he was. Yeah. You know, and how exciting it is. <laughs> all these the silliness actually. Yeah. Um there's you do good silliness in there. Well, don't you? Pardon? You do loads of paper stuff, Edwin, and materials, and you've got loads of, you yeah. know, that's your work, isn't it, as well? It is, yeah. I think it's because I can't be bothered to learn how to use software very well, really. It's like <laughs> a very time-consuming act of laziness. Um, yeah, don't bother with it. It's horrible. <laughs> but I think, um, like... You know, the, I see students who don't know his work, who are making work that suggests they might be interested in it. And he opens up so much, not just for people working in experimental ways, but for people getting into animation or who've been animating for a little while, want to sort of develop their voice a bit. It just opens it up so much. It's a real treat, I think, for an animator to come across his work. Um, yeah. We're about out of time, unfortunately. So um, oh. I'm going to say... Thank you very much to both of you. It's been really, really great. Could talk Thanks. for hours longer. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, thanks to everyone watching. Thanks a lot.